Hi everyone, it's your girl Janelle J, and welcome back to the Married to a Trucker channel. If you're new to the channel, feel free to go back and watch my welcome video. In this episode, we'll be answering the infamous question, are you ready to become an owner operator? So stay tuned. Are you a company driver and you've been wondering if it's time to become an owner operator? Well, in this episode, I'll be discussing the differences between being a company driver versus being a leased on owner operator. In a later video, we'll be covering getting your own authority, which is starting your own trucking company. But for this video, we'll just be discussing leasing on to another carrier's authority. When you lease on to another carrier's authority, that means you have your own truck and you lease on to another trucking company using their DOT and MC number. It is my recommendation that if you are a company driver, that before you jump into getting your own authority, you first get some experience by leasing your truck on to another carrier. I hear people say all the time that they're not going to lease on to another carrier because if they have their own truck, they might as well get their own authority. In my opinion, I feel like it's already a huge transition to go from being a company driver to an owner operator, but adding in owning your own trucking business on top of that is a whole nother story entirely. I realize why it may sound good to have your own trucking company and you can also grow to 100% of whatever you make and not have to pay a lease on fee to someone else, but there's a lot that comes with owning your business. And if not done correctly, you could be out of business before you even start. That's why I say it's best to get some experience leasing on to another carrier, to watch them, to learn from them and get the knowledge that you need. Pay close attention to the things they do. Um, it's a good time to get an understanding of the costs involved and basically what it takes to run a trucking company. But back to transitioning from a company driver to a lease on owner operator. Um, so there's a lot of things that you need to take into consideration. As an owner operator, you are now responsible for all costs and expenses involving operating your truck. Also, as an owner operator, you are now considered a 1099 contractor and you're considered self-employed. We'll get into what all that entails in a minute, but for now, let's just get into some of the startup and ongoing costs involved. We'll start with the startup costs. The first startup cost, of course, is your truck purchase. Trucking is a huge cash and tips industry, so the first thing you'll need to have money for is to purchase your truck, whether you're going to buy the truck outright, whether you're going to finance it or lease it. In many cases, you most likely will need a hefty cash investment on hand, whether you're going to buy a new truck or a used truck. And we'll get into whether, you know, it's better to buy a new or used truck in a later video. But for now, we'll just, just know that you need anywhere from ten dollars to 20000 for a down payment for a truck. Number two is that you may need the upfront money to get your IRP plates or tags for your truck. Um, depending on your state, this cost can range you anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500. And sometimes, depending on the carrier you choose to lease onto, they may have a lease, a, a plate program in which they'll cover the upfront cost, and then it's just your job to reimburse them over a set period of weeks. But keep in mind, if you do purchase your own plates and pay that for your front, those plates belong to you. So if you ever decide to switch carriers, you can take those plates with you. Number three. Number three is your $2,290 fee um, that you must pay when you're operating your truck, which is the heavy highway use vehicle tax. Um, and basically this is a tax that you pay to the IRS and it's $550 a year. Um, and depending on the service that you use to file, they may charge you a fee to file, a third party may charge you a fee to file on your behalf. Uh, but this fee is typically less than $50. Number four, number four is the cost of truck insurance. Now upfront insurance costs depend on the carrier that you leased onto. Uh, depending on the carrier, um, there are many different ways that they can have insurance set up. But in general, the carrier is responsible for adding you to their primary liability and also their cargo insurance. And then you reimburse them as you start to work. Other insurances like Bobtail insurance, depending on the carrier, um, you may be responsible for attaining those on your own and also paying for any down payment that may be required. Number five. Number five is your trailer cost. Most of the time, the carrier will provide you with a trailer. However, if you want, don't want the carrier to have to charge you this fee, whether it's like a weekly fee or comes out of their, um, the percentage, it may be a good idea to take a look into getting your own trailer um, because you can control that cost and when you ever decide to part ways with the carrier, you can take your trailer with you. 
Overall, it's ideal to have anywhere from 15,000 to 25,000 to get started on your owner operator journey. Now, let's move on to ongoing costs. Um, and what you'll notice is that some of the initial costs, they actually stick around even after startup. Okay, so the first ongoing cost is of course your truck payment, unless you purchase your truck outright. Um, if not, you're gonna have a truck note and truck payments can range anywhere from $1,000 a month to $1,000 a week or more. Um, and this can depend on if you finance your truck, if you leased it, um, the interest rate when you bought the truck, and of course the cost of the truck itself. Another major ongoing cost is repairs and maintenance. Um, everyone knows this, that you'll need money for repairs and maintenance. So you want to have a rainy day fund set aside to be able to cover these repairs. As the owner of the truck, you are now responsible for all these repairs. Um, you know, hopefully you do have a good warranty, um, but either way, truck repairs are going to cost you anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000 each and every time you go into a shop. And then, God forbid, if there was something major going on, like an engine you need to replace or something like that, the cost can range up to twenty to 30000 So um, just be aware that these are some costs that you may have to pay for one day. Um, another thing related to breaks downs that people fail to consider is the downtime. The downtime is the silent killer. Um, because let's say your truck is in the shop for several days or several weeks, it can take time, especially if they have to order a part or if something's on back order, and that's time that you're not making money. Okay, another ongoing cost now that you have a truck is parking. Um, now that you have a truck and also maybe a trailer, um, if you are a local driver or a regional driver, um, you typically have to pay to park in someone's lot if your carrier doesn't have a specific drop lot for you. Um, and then those costs can range anywhere from a couple hundred dollars a month. If you're over the road, then you're responsible for finding parking as you go, and you could potentially be paying for parking on a daily basis. Next is tolls. Tolls are something that you didn't have to deal with as a company driver, um, and you'll soon see how expensive tolls can be, um, especially if you're running in the Northeast. So some tips on keeping the tolls low is trying to take alternate routes that don't require tolls, um, use an easy pass or whatever toll transponder you have in your state. Uh, but this will help reduce the cost and help keep your tolls organized so you don't have a bunch of invoices being mailed to your house. Another way to offset toll costs is to make sure that whatever rate you're getting paid is adequately compensating you for the cost of the tolls. Another ongoing cost now that you have your truck may be handling truck washes, scale tickets, and any other supplies that you may need. And depending on the carrier, um, some carriers do offer to pay for these for you or provide reimbursements. All of these ongoing costs I discuss are typically your responsibility and handled outside of your weekly settlement or paycheck that the carrier will provide to you. There are some additional ongoing costs that are actually directly deducted from your settlement that the company takes out of your check. Um, and the first major cost, of course, is your fuel. Um, typically, the carrier you're leased onto, they'll give you a fuel card, just like you would get as a company driver, but the main difference is you're responsible for paying that fuel card back on a weekly basis because it comes right out of your settlement. And fuel is gonna cost you anywhere between 15 to 25% of whatever you gross. There are several other expenses that are gonna be deducted straight from your settlement, including insurance, your IRP plates, if the carrier paid for those upfront, um, any EOD fees, your permits, your if the taxes, and so much more. Um, and we'll get into some of these terms in a later video. In addition to these trucking expenses, you also have to pay a lease on fee to the company that you're using their DOT and MC number. Um, because they're the ones that's usually handling all the back office work behind the scenes. Typical lease on fees can range anywhere from 10 to 35%, depending on the company you choose to lease on to. So while it may appear that finding a carrier with a low lease on fee is a smarter decision, um, which it may be, um, but a lot of the times there are additional deductions that they may take out on top of the percentage they charge you, um, like a dispatch fee or a facting fee. 
Um, typically with the larger carrier, you'll get like more support, you'll get better fuel discounts and programs like that. And then they do handle all of like the back office compliance um, and getting everything kind of set up for you. But of course, you're going to be paying more usually to those larger carriers because they do usually a little bit more. While with the smaller carriers, their percentage to lease onto them might be a less, um, but typically they're a little bit more hands off. And then there may be a lot of or more initial startup costs to kind of help you get up started. Like I mentioned, like your plates, your if the license, et cetera. So that's why it's important to do your homework when finding a carrier to lease onto. So now let's get to the good part. We've talked about all these deductions. So I'm sure you're wondering why, why would anyone want to do this? Well, it's because of the money potential, the money that you can potentially make. While expenses are very high, you're, you should be making significantly more money as an owner operator than you did as a company driver. I'm talking anywhere from $4,000 to $10,000 gross a week. Um, and the reason that I provided such a large range is because it does depend on so many different factors. Um, it depends on the, the seasons in trucking, um, any different factors that are happening in the market, the type of loads that you're hauling, whether you're driving, reefer, heavy haul, those types of things, um, whether you're local, regional, over the road, um, and then also the type of contracts or dedicated routes that your company may have. Um, so let's just say, for instance, as a local drive-in driver who's home on the weekends, you would gross around $5,000 average a week. After you take all your expenses and your deductions from your check, um, you may get anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500 um, at the end of the day, after you paid all your expenses, including your truck note. So, but it does depend on a lot of different factors. Um, in a later video, um, I'll go into a lot more detail and also provide like a sample settlement. So you're able to see the breakdown of your gross expenses all the way down um, to your net. But for now, just know as an owner operator, you can definitely make more money um, if you learn to manage your costs. Managing your costs can include getting, you know, the best fuel discounts, avoiding tolls, and keeping it up with maintenance, and also having money set aside for those unexpected emergencies. Next benefit of being an owner operator is that you can control your schedule. As a company driver, you get assigned the load, you do it no questions asked. But as an owner operator, you typically have a lot more control and flexibility. Usually carriers, they'll say no force dispatch, so you'll have the option to accept or reject the load. Um, but sometimes you do have to be careful because while they do say force dispatch, they may get frustrated if you do keep rejecting loads. So just something to be mindful of. Um, also, you can typically take off when you want to, so that's great. Um, but the downside with that is that you don't actually have PTO or paid time off as you would as a company driver. So those fixed expenses, like your truck insurance and things like that, those will continue to accrue so that once you come back off the PTO, you have to pay back the expenses from the prior week. As a company driver, you may have had to deal with things like having a camera pointing outward or inward towards you and your truck, and you know, sometimes even both. So you know, sometimes drivers feel like this may be an invasion of their privacy um, and the next thing that you don't have to worry about is your truck being governed, which meaning your truck won't be able to go over a certain speed, like the average is like 65 miles an hour that the carrier typically governs your truck. Um, but as an owner operator, you typically don't have to worry about that. That's more on the company driver's side. Lastly, since it's your truck, you can now customize it how you like. You can keep it clean and organized, and you don't have to worry about sharing another truck, sharing your truck with another company driver. A few other things I wanted to make you aware of is taxes. Taxes as an owner operator. Um, now, since you are a 1099 contractor instead of a, instead of a W-2 employee, taxes are not withheld from your check. So while this may seem like a great thing initially, and you seems like you're getting paid a lot more. Um, you're supposed to actually set aside money so that when tax time comes around the, the next year, you have the money set aside to pay them. And also, depending on how you're set up, you are actually supposed to typically pay quarterly tax payments based off of what you think your estimated tax would be. 
So just to give you a little bit more, um, basically you're setting aside taxes based off of your net income. So that's your gross minus all your expenses is your net. So you want to base your tax percentage like 10 to 20 percent of whatever that net number is and make sure you set that aside. Um, so it's important that you get to talk to a tax accountant or a CPA uh, for them to help you file your taxes. Um, and I definitely recommend getting an accountant that specializes in the trucking industry um, because they understand all the deductions you can take and they'll help you pay the least amount of taxes. Um, as a self-employed contractor, um, typically you do have to form a business within your state. So whether you want to become an LLC or an S corporation, um, that's up to you. Um, there are benefits for each. Um, most trucking companies start out as an LLC and because it's usually more straightforward process with less paperwork to maintain. Um, and then if you want to become an S corp, usually you get more tax benefits but you have to earn over a certain amount. So there's a kind of a lot that goes into that. But either way, whatever business type you decide to file, it'll help you protect your personal assets just in case something were to go wrong in your business. Uh, next thing you need to be aware of is that you will no longer have benefits. I'm talking health benefits, 401k, et cetera. So for me, luckily I was able to add my husband to my medical benefits and my job. Um, but that's something you need to consider before you just jump out there. In many states, you also may have to have workers' compensation insurance. Um, another alternative is to get occupational accident insurance, and this will help cover your medical bills just in case you get into an accident while trucking. Overall, there's a lot of things to consider, but you can truly be profitable if you take the time to understand what you're entering into. One thing about the trucking industry is that you have to understand is that Trucking has ups and downs. It has its slow seasons. Right now in trucking in May 2023, it's a very tough time in trucking. Uh, rates are low. Well, at least in comparison to 2020 and also 2021, um, they're more in line with how rates have historically been prior to the pandemic. Um, but fuel costs are still relatively high and truck prices are high. So as a company driver, typically you get paid regardless of what's going on in the market. As an owner operator, you typically get paid as a percentage of the load. So if your loads aren't paying well, then that directly affects your pockets. So timing is very important when you enter this market. Um, so for me and my husband's experience, um, we, came, we became an owner operator when he was a company driver for approximately five years. Um, at the time, you know, I wasn't quite sure if we were ready to make that leap, but I knew that it was always something he wanted to do. So when we got the opportunity, um, his job that he was company he was working for gave him an option to purchase a truck. It was a used truck. Um, it might have been like eight years old at the time and had like 700,000 miles on it, um, but it was only like $12,000. So we decided to go ahead and take the leap and go for it and buy the truck because I knew he would never let me live it down if we didn't. Um, and for me, I was just a little bit hesitant because I knew we didn't know everything we needed to know about being an owner operator and I didn't feel fully prepared. Um, but it also another thing is we pretty much spent the bulk of our savings to buy the truck. So it really didn't leave much after that to kind of get started on our journey. Um, luckily, the carrier that he was leased onto, they had they provided repair loans, and basically it was a low interest rate loan, didn't have really real requirements, and pretty much you just had to be a contractor with them to kind of get approved. So we were able to kind of get some repair loans we needed to, and that really helped us during that time. So I don't know without that support, I don't know we would still be in the game today. So I just want you to realize that when you decide to become an owner operator, it's like running a small business. It's important to do your research and get a mentor if possible. That's it for this episode, but please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and set your bell notifications for when the next video comes out. Please also comment below. Um, if I've missed any other pros and cons about becoming an owner operator, please mention those below. I will catch you next time. Bye.